So hello and welcome to my apparently monthly updates on how my life in Asia is going. Uh, the last time I left you guys, it was St. Patrick's Day. So the next weekend, or my weekend after that, the 23rd of uh, March, not a whole lot happened. Um, the job is a lot more work than you would assume it would be, so it was kind of nice to just stay in. We ordered in some food and watched some movies and I didn't leave my apartment and it was wonderful. Um, the next weekend after that, however, Walt, Ray, and Paul, and myself, we all ended up going to Yangshuo. So Yangshuo is an area here in China in the south. It is near Guilin. That is the, the bigger area, so it's a little easier to find if you're going to research. Um, and what it's known for is if you've ever seen the back of a 20 choir, 20 RMB note, there is a scenic picture of like the mountains with a river. That is in just outside of Yangshuo in a little ancient uh, village called Xingping. So we decided to go down there so we could go see this really cool scenic spot that is on the back of a 20 Kwai. So when we first got there, it took us three hours by train uh, approximately. We had to then take a bus, an hour bus from the train station to actually get into Yangshuo itself. Um, Rain had found this awesome little hotel though, so it was definitely worth the trip. It was really nice getting out of the city, um, getting to see some nature again. There were like trees and the mountains and the air was a little fresher. It was really, really nice. Um, the first day we got there, we decided to just kind of look at this, this town and find some other things to do. It was kind of misty and rainy outside, so it wasn't a great day to go to the scenic spot. So what we did first is we ended up having um, this dish that Yang Chuo is known for called beer fish. So this is a fish that has been cooked in a sauce that has a beer in it. Um, the sauce was really good. The fish was okay. Uh, I think the fish might have been a little off the first time we had it. Um, Paul Ryan had nothing but good things to say about this dish and it, it wasn't as good the first day that we tried it. The second time around it was definitely better. So it, it was the kind of fish that um, was cooked for us, that they picked, but the sauce was really nice. So then from there, we found a tour into some caves that Yangshu was also known for. This again was like an hour bus ride outside of Yangshu, however, to get there. Um, but there are these gigantic cave formations that have happened that have now become a tourist trap and you can walk through them. Um, so you have to obviously pay to get in and then you have to go through the obligatory souvenir shop at the end, but they are massive caves. They are very cool. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description for you guys, and there are some pictures on my blog of the caves themselves so you guys can see them. It was really neat walking through, um, and there were areas that were so incredibly hot. It was so odd. I'm so used to, like, I've been caving before, and down in the caves, they're really cold, and there were sections of this cave that were just incredibly hot. So odd. Um, so what they've done is they have created like a pathway that you can walk through through these caves and they've put all these different color lights everywhere. Then they give you like an auditory um, tourist guide, like a little uh, walkman is what it looks like. So that when you hit certain areas throughout the caves it starts to play and it'll tell you about the different formations. So there's some really cool interesting things there. There was like a little lake that had formed that was so still and it was considered like a mirror you could see the reflection of the caves from the top and the bottom um but like i said there's a description and there'll be pictures for you guys to look at on my blog so we walked through the caves we had about an hour ish to do that and then we headed back into Yangshuo and went to the west street so west street is uh very much their it's like their tourist town area uh, Walt and I were saying that it, it reminded me a lot of Banff and, and him as this park in Colorado. So it has that real like mountainy touristy town feel to it with all those kinds of shops that are like little tourist trap shops. A little more expensive than it would be if you lived outside of this, the town. Um, really nice though. So there are all different kinds of bars. So after we came back from the caves, uh, we decided to do a dinner. And we ended up at a German restaurant of all places in China, which ended up not being terrible. The food was pretty good. Um, and then from there, we headed to this little 
bar that uh, Rayan really loves. So Rayan and Paul go to Yangshuo all the time. Um, this is something they, they wanted to share with us and show us around. So there's this little bar that Rayan has fallen in love with. The owner um, this is this woman that just loves to sing, and she decided one day that she wanted to start some place where she could just sing all the time. So she started a bar just so she could sing for the public. So we went there to listen to her sing a couple songs for us, and we had a drink. And then from there, we ended up finding this little reggae bar. Um, it was slightly terrifying. I'm not gonna lie, walking up there. The floorboards felt like they would give out at any second. And there was like a this little bench that I tried sitting on, and I thought it was gonna collapse in on itself. So we ended up on this little patio area outside of this reggae bar um, and started playing this drinking game, which is possibly the most evil drinking game that Paul has ever introduced to me. Uh, you have a can of beer with three circles of cards around the outside and you call out a color. Um, it, so if I said red and I pulled a red three, I get to pick somebody to drink for three seconds. If it's a black three, I pick somebody to count to three seconds while I drink. The second ring is times two, the third ring is times three, and then you have to make like a mushroom cloud of cards on top of this can of beer. If you put your card on it, you drop a couple of the cards and you have to shotgun this beer. Um, it was a lot more drinking than we had anticipated that we'd be doing that night. Um, and then after this, we decided that we weren't done yet, so we had to go to another bar. So there is a bar in Yangshuo called Bad Panda, and there is underwear packed all over the ceiling that people um, apparently if they win something they can give them their underwear and they'll put them on the ceiling I don't know how that's winning I feel like more like if you lost a game you have to get rid of your underwear but um, apparently you have to win a game to put your underwear on the ceiling so that was a little odd but there's a couple dogs there so we hung out with some dogs and then we played some foosball turned that into a drinking game and then we ended up back at the hotel um, the next morning, uh, cursing Paul just a little bit, I think. Um, but the night was really nice. It was really nice to get, like I said, get out of the city, just to let go a little bit. And uh, it was definitely something that we're going to be doing again in probably in the near future, if possible. So after that, the next day before we left to come back to Guangzhou and back to work, uh, we went into Xingping. Just like I said, just outside of um, Yangshuo, so that we could go see this uh, scenic viewpoint of the back of the Twenty Kwai. So we got to the little ancient village and we walked through this little area, which was even more relaxed and laid back than uh, Yangshuo was. It had more of that like ancient Chinese village feel to it. It was kind of nice. It was really cool to see that. So we walked through there and we saw like this little art gallery and then we walked up the mountain um, side and we ended up getting to see this view. We didn't have a 20 kwai and again I don't have a 20 kwai on me otherwise I'd show you guys what it looks like so I'll have to put a picture, um, <laughs> a link to a picture in the description for you guys of the 20 kwai. Um, but we had every other bill with us so there is a picture somewhere that Paul has of the 5, 10, the 50 and 100, and then in the middle is the picture of the, the scenery that we are actually there. So it was really, it was pretty. There's uh, not a whole lot else to do there. If we had more time, apparently there is this little, like a riverboat tour-ish thing that you can do on some bamboo boats, and you can just float down the river. But that takes a couple hours, and our train, it left at a certain time, so we could get back in time to go to work and everything, or at least get get home in time to go to bed to go to work. Um, so we got to see this scenery and then we ended up at a little bar or um, restaurant cafe in uh, Xingping before we headed back to the train and we played a whole bunch of Sanguisha. This is something that happens every time I'm with Paul and Rain is we end up playing this card game. So we introduced Walt to it and uh, tried to get him involved in the game. But I will admit the first couple times you play it's the rules are a little hard to understand, especially since everything is in Chinese. You're constantly asking Rayan for like advice and help and just hoping that she's not lying to you and cheating. <laughs> um, but that was really fun. It was really nice. 
So then we came back, went to work, and then on April 4th, so then we, we come back into April. Uh, April 4th, I ended up going to the Philippines. My friend May, um, another uh, Disney cast member, the one I took her classes over for here in Guangzhou, she is from the Philippines and she just had a baby recently. So I decided, I had a little bit of time off, so I was going to go into the Philippines to go see her and her new baby. I will say, uh, this is definitely a memorable trip, to say the least. And I think I have been told that I'm never allowed to leave the country again and tour by myself. I have to go with people from now on. Um, and go to resorts and like planned, you know. It has to be a planned vacation. I can't just go anywhere anymore alone. Uh, so the Philippines. I got to Manila to catch my connecting flight into Cebu. Um, Manila is possibly the worst airport in the entire world. Like, just hands down, just a terrible airport. If at all possible, do not fly into Manila. <laughs> fly around, go to anywhere else if you can. Unfortunately, it is a little cheaper to fly into Manila. Uh, but it is just, the signs are non-existent. People don't seem to know what they're doing there, even if they work there. Uh, it was a lot, and it was a little stressful because I needed to get another ticket in order to get to my plane to Cebu. Nobody knew where I was supposed to go, and the ticket that I had didn't have the new airline on it. A whole mess. Anyway, finally got to Cebu, and I had one night in Cebu before I met uh, B, another uh, woman who works at the Disney Center I'm at, so she was going to go see May as well. So she, we were going to meet each other when she flew in and then take the ferry down to Bahal, which is where uh, May and Philip are with their baby. So I had a night in Cebu to myself. And instead of booking anything online or finding, you know, a legit hotel, I found this area online that said that there are these little huts you can rent on the beach. And it was really cheap. And the pictures looked really nice. And so I figured, okay, well, I'll just take a taxi down here, um, I'll get to the beach, and I'll just sleep on the beach for the night. Like, I'm okay with that. I'll go swimming, and then, you know, whatever. Um, get there, finally. It took us forever in the taxi to get to this beach. Get to the beach, and these guys who I'm led to believe work there um, are like, you need, like, a place to stay, and I wanted one of the huts. And I was like, yes, I do. So they led me kind of away from the beach, like oh no they're like trying to get me to like stay at this hotel or something that they own and like so they were they wanted like something crazy like 400 kwai for the night for this tiny little room it's like i am not i'm not doing that that's ridiculous so no thank you thank you very much i'm gonna go now I'll go back to the beach i'll be fine i'll figure it out on my own so as i'm leaving the other guy follows me he's like no 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 that's guy they were trying to rip you off Terrible, whatever. I, I know a room, a really cheap room. I was like, okay, I guess. So I'm, as I'm following him, I'm thinking, Walt would be so mad at me right now. I should not be doing this. This is so stupid. Why are you following this guy that you just met in a different country? He can't speak as much English, you know. It was just a bad, bad idea. Follow him, found this little room. It was a little tiny place, but it was fine. And at this point, it's starting to get dark. So it's like, all right. Like, go, go talk to the manager, find out. He's like, yeah, 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 it's like, it was like half the cost or less than half the cost for the night. I was like, all right, okay, sounds good. Get this room and we're sitting there and he's talking to me and then the owner of somebody comes to talk to him and he closes the door so this guy can't see me. He's like, are you sure I'm allowed? Like, they know that I'm the one staying here and this is okay? He's like, yeah, 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 no problem, no problem. It was about 6.30 at this point. It's like, you know, I don't want to... I'm, like, really uncomfortable. I was like, I don't want to stay in this room right now. Like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to wander. Like, if I wanted to stay in a room, I would not have left my apartment. That's, I'm in the Philippines. I want to go look at the Philippines. So I wanted to go down to the beach. And he's, I just want him to point me in the direction, but that obviously didn't happen. So he led me down to this area. Um, and it was quite a nice area, but you had to, like, pay to get in. I was like, I just wanted to go look at the beach. And, sat there for a while and he was 
kind of like trying to make small talk and was just like, I have no interest in this. And um, he started singing weird Filipino love songs to me. I was like, you know, I have a boyfriend. Like, I'm not interested at all. And he kept making comments like, oh, Filipino men are much stronger than American men. And it's, no, 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 like, I, I'm not interested. So we get back. Finally, I'm like, you know, I'm just tired. I'm just going to go and go to bed. I know it's early. So, like, you can just go home. He's like, no, 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 I'll, I'll be your bodyguard. He's like, I don't need a bodyguard. Like, really, I'm fine. Like, you can go home. And um, so we get back. He's like, so you, you, you sleep alone? I was like, yes, like, alone. Like, you're not coming in this room. He's like, I'll sleep outside and to protect you. I was like, you don't have, like, it's really, it's like 8 o'clock. Like, go home. It's really early. No, it's like I live far away, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's really early. You have lots of time to go home. Go home. Get a knock at the door around 11 o'clock. And uh, he, he wants this chicken that he bought for, for me. Um, I was like, all right, fine. Like, whatever. Take it. Like, I don't care. And uh, he's like, you know, I can't come in. I was like, no, you can't come in. Like, I'm, I'm, you're, I'm sleeping. Like, go away. Go home. It's still early enough at this point, I think, that you could go home. So I take my bag and I put it on a chair and I put the chair in front of the door just in case because I'm not extremely comfortable with the situation at all. And about 1.45 in the morning, I'm woken to knocking. Knocking on the door, knocking on the window, on the door, on the window. Finally, I open the door. It's like, what the hell do you want from me? It's like, oh, oh, like you have to, you have to let me in. I'm scared. Like, Why do I have to let you in? Like, I don't, what, what's going on? He's like, there's a giant bird with fangs out here. First of all, how stupid do you think I am? Like, there was no giant bird with fangs. It's like, it's like a bat? It's like, no, 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 like giant, big, big bird, big fangs. He's like, oh, oh, scared, you have to let me in. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not letting you in. I would rather pay for another room for you so that you don't sleep in here if there is legitimately a giant bird with fangs out there. Like, you're not coming in to the room. It's not happening. Um, so... Okay, fine. Deal with that. He slept on a plastic chair outside of my room the entire night. So I barely slept. And finally, around 5 o'clock in the morning, I hear this noise that sounds like a key in the door. Wakes me up. I look up, and there's a face in the window. This dude is, like, looking into the room. Freaked the shit out of me. So got up, got dressed, and uh, grabbed my backpack. And I just stormed out of this room to, to, like, leave. I was like, fuck this. Like, I'm out. And uh, he starts to follow me, and it's like, what? Like, no, go away. Like, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. He's like, oh, like, this, the guy, the owner, thought that, like, we were together, and like, I was staying in the room with you, and that's why we got this discount, and now he wants more money. It's like, you told me this flat rate. I'm not paying any more money. Oh, well, if you don't pay this money, they're going to call the cops because blah, blah, blah. So I didn't even have the amount of money that they wanted threw whatever cash I had left at him, and I walked away. Like, don't ever talk to me again. I don't ever want to see you again. So now I'm in the middle of Cebu uh, with no money. I have my card, but I have no cash. And I have a bunch of RMB on me, but that's not going to help me in the Philippines. No idea where I am. So I'm walking, and I'm asking people, like, which way to the airport? I keep being like, taxi? It's like, no, no. I have no money for a taxi. Which way to the airport? So... Following people's directions, I walked for two and a half hours. Um, about an hour and a half in, I found 10 peso in my bag so that I could buy like a 250 milliliter bottle of water because I had not had any water that day. I had not had any food. Um, and I had been walking for an hour and a half already at this point. So I had about 250 milliliters of water and then walked for another hour. Um, and finally found a place I could take money out on my Union Pay card, my Chinese card. Get some money and then take a taxi for the last half hour to the airport so I could go meet B. Get to the airport like probably a good hour and a half before her flight lands. It's just like, screw it. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I've seen all of Cebu. I have walked all of Cebu. I don't need to see any more of Cebu. So I sat and watched some shows on my iPad uh, for like an hour and a half at the airport in Cebu waiting for a bee to come in. So she finally gets there and we take a taxi to the ferry and we catch this ferry that ended up being like two and a half hours or something ridiculous to get to Bahal. So we didn't get to Bahal until like, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon. It was a ridiculous amount of time just waiting and like traveling. Um, 
So finally get to Zabu. We get to this area that her, she's booked this hotel. Thankfully, they had an extra room that night. Um, so I stayed in the same place that she did. Really nice place. Um, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. It was a yellow house looking area in Bahal, um, but it was really nice. So I would, I would ask for the information so I could stay there again if I ever go back to the Philippines. So from there, we end up finally get to go see May and the baby. This is the whole reason I went to the Philippines and spent all of this money to get here is to go see my friend and her new baby. So we had a little bit of time where we could visit and we talked and we got to see this new baby and then we went, they were switching houses from her mom's house to the, this other house that was Philip's house or something like this. So we went, went to this other house, got to see Philip. And then they decided that, okay, we're gonna go out for some food. So they took us to this restaurant, they had some great Filipino food, it was a really nice dinner. Uh, the mom or their, their nanny took care of the baby. That is, everybody in the Philippines apparently has like a nanny for their kids. And uh, it's uh, something that I'm, you know, you think like, okay, only rich people have nannies, but apparently that's like a thing in the Philippines is that everybody has like a maid to clean their house or like a nanny to take care of their babies and things like that. Um, so we left the baby with the nanny and we went for dinner. And then from there, we went and had some coffee and some ice cream, and we picked up some, um, some of the, this liquor that B really liked. This like it was a Filipino coconut rum. I think it was called Bombay or Borkai Borkai rum. Really good. I will admit it was a lot better than the Malibu um, rum, coconut rum. So this Borkai rum is it was really delicious. That with like this sweet lime syrup in it. Um, so we went for these drinks and we had some tea with me and Philip and then we went, they ended up dropping us back off at our, our little hotel and I had a nightcap with B. So I got to taste this, this rum, which if I could check on a bag or I could go back to a store, I would have bought a bottle because it was, it was actually really enjoyable. Uh, and then I had to wake up extremely early the next morning so that I could catch the ferry back to Cebu so that I could catch my flight back into Guangzhou so that I could get ready to work on the Friday. So I got back into Guangzhou on Thursday and that gave me a night to relax. Um, Walt actually met me at my apartment <laughs> from, it was, it was kind of nice to come back to somebody after that. It was an extremely stressful trip. Bahal was awesome. I loved Bahal. May and Philip were wonderful people. Their baby's really cute. Um, I don't think I'd be going back to Cebu anytime soon. Um, but I would definitely go back to Bahal to go see them. So the Philippines was more of a stressful trip than an actual vacation. Uh, that's for sure. So then I had work. Get through all of that. Uh, on the 12th, so Walt came in on Tuesday, and we ended up going to this bar called Mr. Rocky's, and we had some steak, which was like the first steak I've had in, oh, I don't know, a year and a half-ish, just over a year and a half. So it was really nice. It's a really good steak. Um, it kind of made up for some of the, the previous weekend, I guess. Um, next day, we, I, I met up with some with Haley and we did some shopping. Uh, there's a whole area here in Guangzhou, like we, well, huge sections of Guangzhou, I guess, where you can get a lot of knockoff stuff, really cheap things. And there's a whole section. Uh, there's a lot of African and Middle Eastern women there, so you can find bras that will actually fit people that are not Chinese. So we went there and we bought some really cheap bras. It was awesome. And then I um, met up with Walt, and we went to a bookstore. And then we ended up going to see a Superman versus Batman movie, which I was told such terrible things about this movie that I went in with such low expectations. It was actually better than I thought it was going to be. It was not great by any means. And uh, it wasn't even necessarily the acting that was completely terrible. The directing was just so bad, and there were so many things that, like, you just had no idea what was going on. Or, like, if you had done it this way, that would have made way more sense. I don't know why that happened. Like, if I was Superman, why would you not do that kind of thing? 
But again, it was way more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be because I had been given such bad reviews about this movie before going in. Uh, and then we ended up at the brew for trivia because we were in the area anyway. Um, the movie theater we go to, I had a ticket for, so it was actually in the area near the brew. And um, Haley had to go in to go watch her replacement for the weekend because she was leaving for her own vacation. So we went and played some trivia with her. And uh, then the next morning, I actually had to wake up early again because um, I, I was an adult. And I went to the dentist, so that was exciting. And then I, and then I actually ended up still having the afternoon with Walt before he left to go back to Ponyo. Um, so, and then I didn't actually. We, there wasn't that much time between when I saw him last to when I saw him next. Like he came in uh, for the night on the nineteenth. Uh, we had some some dinner together and just kind of hung out. And then on the twentieth of March, our next Wednesday, I went into Ponyu with him. So I got to go see his apartment for the first time. And um, it's not as, as dirty as I thought it would be. Um, the toilet seat though, man, like, it's not him. It was like, oh, it's, my mother has this thing that um, she's passed along to me where you buy a new toilet seat anytime you move into a new apartment. And if it was easy to buy a new toilet seat, it definitely would be done in that apartment for China because, yeah, it was pretty, like, discolored. <laughs> it definitely has been used, that toilet seat. It has seen a lifetime. Uh, but other than that, his apartment was actually pretty clean for being a bachelor pad. He doesn't have any cooking anywhere. So... The place he lives, apparently it used to be a hotel, and it, they converted it into apartments um, because the, the hotel failed. So these apartments have no kitchen. They have like a little kitchenette type area and one sink that is used for both the bathroom and for the kitchen, like for washing dishes and things. And he has a hot plate, but that's it. But he no, he didn't even have a hot plate. He could buy a hot plate, I guess, if he wanted one. He has a kettle. So he, apparently he eats a lot of like cups of noodles and he and coffee. And that's pretty much it because his fridge is also broken. So he doesn't even have anywhere to put like fruit or vegetables or milk or juice or anything. So he has a broken fridge that doesn't work. No stove, no microwave, no oven, and no hot plate. Uh, he has a, a kettle. So... <laughs> we didn't spend a whole lot of time at the apartment. Uh, when we first got there, we went for some fried chicken, of all things. It's apparent, it was supposed to be like a Korean fried chicken, but it ended up being an American fried chicken place. Um, and then we went to a house party. So a whole bunch of the different foreign trainers, not just Disney trainers down in Ponyu, they're all friends because there's not a lot of foreigners down in Ponyu. So they all got together and had this house party. So Walt brought me with him to this. It was actually a lot of fun. Uh, it was it was rather enjoyable. We we played a bunch of drinking games that um, I introduced a couple to them, and then Walt introduced one. So Walt and I kind of led all of the drinking games, um, and then we just kind of hung out, and other people started playing beer pong, and then we left, and we went for dinner near uh, the area that he lives near his the center that he works at. Um, had some frozen yogurt, and then we ended up going to see a movie uh, called American Ultra. It was in the theater still here. Oddly, not a bad movie. Like, uh, Jesse Eisenberg, he's an okay actor. He was probably the worst part about Batman vs. Superman. Um, I won't lie about that. And I cannot stand Kristen Stewart. I think she is the worst actress. Um, but that was a very enjoyable movie despite having both of those actors in this movie. Um, it, they were kind of stoners, and, and that really works for them for acting purposes, and their chemistry together was pretty good. So it was an enjoyable night. Um, and then we headed back to his apartment and uh, just kind of hung out there for the night. And then the next morning, we went for waffles and coffee before I had to leave. 
on you and come back to Guangzhou so that I could get ready to go to work the next morning. Um, overall, Panyu was definitely not as bad as people give it credit for. It was quite an enjoyable weekend. Um, like I liked, I liked hanging out with Walt, obviously, and uh, it was a lot more laid back than the city is, and the air is a little better out there, so that was really nice. So the next weekend, uh, the last week, I guess, of uh, April, uh, on the 25th was Haley's birthday. So I made, and, and Simon's birthday, so the new LLD of our center, THP. Both of them have the same birthday, they are the same age. Um, so they turned 28 <laughs> on the 25th, and I decided to make them this cake. I brought it into work. It was a Dr. Pepper chocolate cake. If any of you out there like Dr. Pepper, look for this recipe because it is amazing. It is the most moist chocolate cake and the icing has Dr. Pepper in it and it was just delicious. Really, really sweet, but really good. Um, so at work we ate this cake. Everybody was really happy. So I think if, if ever people are starting to feel like really depressed at work or angry, if I just make a chocolate cake or some cookies or something, everybody seems really happy. And, uh, and work was a little better that day. So, no, I guess noted to myself to do that if I'm ever feeling like we kind of need a boost at Sunder. Um, so that night after work, we went to this little uh, microbrewery near, near the brew area for Haley's birthday to go have a drink. Um, and then the next night, on the 26th, uh, Walt and I ended up going back out for steak at Mr. Rocky's on a double date with um, these guys Brandon and Yoshi. Um, it was actually a lot more enjoyable than I thought it was going to be. It was, you know, the conversation was pretty good. It wasn't as awkward as I thought it was going to be. And then from there we went to KTV. So that is something that Haley also had decided to do. Simon was supposed to come, but uh, he has a new baby as well, so he wasn't able to make it. Um, but KTV was awesome. One, because it was fun to get everybody together again. But Cami had uh, flown from America back to Japan and she had a stop over here in Guangzhou. So she came out to KTV. So Cami was out, who was my old LLD. Uh, Joey came out, and Paul, and Megan, and Tiffany, and like, the whole entire old THP crew were kind of back together again. For this KTV on uh, on the Tuesday night, and it was so much fun. It was so happy. Like it was just that feeling that you get, like like, well, my family is back together again. It was so nice. Um, like it was just such a happy night. So we hung out after this double date at KTV with everybody. Um, we were, and then then Mike decides, okay, it's inside room time. Inside room is this club here in Guangzhou that I swear to you. It is about the size of a hallway. So this tiny little bar, um, there are tables along the edges, and then there's like a raised, lit up platform that is about the size of a hallway. And that's it. There's I think there's an upstairs as well. They play quite good music there. I've been there once, but there's just no room. There's like nowhere to dance. It's such an odd, odd feeling. Uh, but everybody likes it, so they all went there, and well, it's nice to snug out. To go home uh, because the next morning was I'm not allowed to call it a team building uh, it was a town hall I guess um, and a free viewing of the Jungle Book it was at 10 o'clock in the morning um, and I now distrust the word free because there's always a catch even if you don't have to pay money you have to do something or give something to somebody so we end up sitting in an auditorium for about half an hour, listening to how badly the South region is doing, uh, and then got to watch Jungle Book. So don't really trust the word free. But overall, I will say um, that Jungle Book was awesome. It was such a well done movie. Every, the casting was just perfect for all of the different characters. And it was a lot more, like once we got through some of that stuff, it was a lot more enjoyable. I definitely thought it was going to be um, not as painful <laughs> as I thought it was going to be. Um, 
So that was what we did on Wednesday. We went to go see Jungle Book. And then Walt and I again kind of snuck away from the crew as everybody was going to another bar. And we came back to the house. And I didn't have a whole lot of food in my apartment at this time. So we decided to like kind of stop and get something on the way back. And ended up going for tapenyaki, which is um, a Japanese food. There is a really nice tapenyaki place uh, near Corners Deli, which is near my house. I've always wanted to try it. I walked past it so many times and it smells so good. So I finally got to try this and some of it was really good. We had this, um, I don't know what it was actually called. The descriptions were very wrong. Uh, it was like stir fried meat, I think is what it was called. It was this beef stir fry with some rice. It was really good. Uh, or like a beef saute, I guess. And then we had a pork with curry and rice and we tried eel fried rice. The eel fried rice was like a really like a sweet fishy flavor to it. It was not bad, but the the sautéed beef was by far like the best part of the meal. So we ate way too much, and rice is already filling as is. And so then we just came back and hung out in the apartment again. And I don't think I left my apartment on the Thursday, which again is not a terrible thing. Uh, and then we get to May. So. May 1st, uh, for Labor Day, we actually get that day off here in China. I, however, volunteered to do a eight hour, extra eight hours of overtime that day for my friend Amanda um, because she is coming to go visit me in about three days' time. Uh, so I needed a little extra so that we could go do some things in Hong Kong. So I worked three or eight, eight hours overtime, 8.5 hours overtime on my Sunday. So I had a long day on Saturday, I had a long day on Sunday, and then I had another long day on Monday um, because our Sunday schedule was shifted to Monday. So I ended up working um, like nine hours and then eight and a half hours and then 12 hours. Um, and then it was Tuesday and finally our weekend, which was so nice. Uh, the weekend was definitely needed for me. Everybody else, I think, also kind of needed it, but for different reasons. A lot of them were very uh, hungover on Sunday and a lot of them didn't leave their apartments because they all went drinking on Saturday night which if I wasn't doing overtime I probably would have gone with them um, it is a nice feeling being able to go out on a Saturday night we don't get to do that very often working for this job and as much as I love ha having our weekends uh, going out on a Tuesday night is very different from going out on a Friday or Saturday night that's for sure so I did my uh, week of work and then that brings us to the third. So that Tuesday night, my friend from back home, uh, Jody, she was actually in China visiting some family and doing a tour and everything. And she flew home on the fourth, so yesterday for me. And I got to see her for a brief time on the third. We had some um, drinks together and, and got caught up with our we see each other about every two years or so. so this is like our two-year reunion and <laughs> get to see each other and find out how she's doing. And so that was kind of neat being able to see a friend from back home here in China. Um, like I said, she was a friend from way back. Like we actually didn't get to go to high school together because she left to do high school in Calgary. So we were friends in middle school um, in Didsbury. So a huge chunk of time has passed, but we still remained friends for all that time so it was really neat seeing her again and then uh, she left to go to bed I guess before catching her plane because she had to fly out yesterday so on the fourth um, I ended up waking up and kind of just hanging around went to the gym did way more shopping and things like that I never expected to actually have to do uh, it was a lot busier a day I'm preparing for my friend Amanda to come. So my friend Amanda is one of my university friends. And she will be coming here on the 8th. Um, so I had to get the spare room ready for her. Turns out humidity and feathers don't go so well together. And I had to throw out a bunch of pillows because they were moldy. And I had to go buy new pillows for her. Um, but the room is clean now, so that's always good. It's kind of nice. Everything's been dusted and swept, and I feel like an adult. Um... So I will be missing in action again for a little while. We will probably still keep this to a monthly update, most likely. 
Um, hoping that Ming Yang will be able to update this on the 26th again. Um, my friend gets here on the 8th and then she leaves on the 21st. So we have a couple weeks there where I'm going to be quite busy doing a whole bunch. But just to kind of let you know what you guys are in for when I come back and see you next time. Uh, we're going to do a whole bunch of days in Hong Kong. We're going to end up going to Hong Kong Disney most likely. Um, she's going to get to see Mung Kok area and we're just going to have hopefully a really good time there. We're going to do some really Chinese things in Panyu with Walt. Uh, and then on the 17th we're actually going to get to fly to Shanghai because as a Disney employee I get to go to Disneyland Shanghai to be one of the uh, soft opening testers. So we get to test the park out before it's open to the general public, which is really cool. And um, some lucky people, uh, they got, they get to go to the resorts as well for a night to do that soft test as well to make sure that everything is running smoothly for when paying customers go. And I got lucky and happened to be dating somebody who won a free night in the Shanghai Resort in Disneyland. So I was gonna go in June, but then Walt won a room at the Toy Story Resort in Shanghai. So we all decided that we it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, so we're gonna go into Shanghai. So I'll let you guys know how that park is and how everything goes and and well my trip trip and my time off is gonna be like in May. Um, but until then I guess uh, we're all caught up. So that was my month of April. Kind of in a nutshell for you guys in my last week of March. Uh, there will be a whole bunch of links um, in the description as well as on my blog. You can go see pictures there. And I will see you guys probably towards the end of May. Alright, so thank you and cheers from China.